Welcome, everyone, to the Sickos Committee Podcast. This is our podcast for the evening of April 23rd, 2023. Hope everyone's having a good weekend. Hope everyone's, yeah, I don't have anything to say. I just trailed off on that one. That's great. Uh, hope, yeah. Hope everybody had a great weekend and enjoying the fantastic Monday. And, and enjoyed some XFL action. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But the stupidest tiebreaker did not happen, and I'm very sad about that. It was almost a points differential tiebreaker in the XFL North because Seattle and Seattle and St. Louis were tied on like the first four tiebreakers and they were down to, I think it's like rank of points given within the conference. It was a really bizarre tiebreaker. <laughs> As always, I'm joined with Kamish and tonight our guests, I just have to stop calling you guys guests at some point. I prefer returning <laughs> champion. Returning champions. Yes. <laughs> returning Jeopardy champions. <laughs> Beth and Pit Girl. Beth, how are you doing? Everything's on fire. My recitals this week, and I'm going to die. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. You're all the good. You're honks. gonna do such good honks. Yes, such we'll good. We'll find honks. out. Which saxophones are you honking on? Alto, tenor, and Barry. Okay, the classics. Many honks. Yep. No soprano. No sopranino. No. No bass. No. No hyper bass. I, I refuse to play those. I have only coward. this one human back. <laughs> you coward. I don't want to strap the 50 pound saxophone onto my neck. That's why you get the cool harnesses that like give you the full, you know. Yeah. Then you just dislocate your okay, hips. Okay. But yeah, also right. like ha having met you in person, how tall is a bass saxophone in comparison to you? Cause I feel like it's a lot. It comes up to just under yeah, my Yeah. That nose. sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I could probably put it on a shoebox and get away with it. Beth, are you the kind of person that has to sit on multiple chairs to play contrabass clarinet? I had to sit on. <laughs> uh oh, we lost Beth. <laughs> Hold up, time out, time out. Taking the picture, taking the picture. Down goes Beth. <laughs> Great picture. Okay, we got yeah, Beth I back. Back. I back. I really thought you were pausing for dramatic effect, and then it turned out I, you you were back. Too. I was talking and I couldn't see. It was terrifying. <laughs> no, I, uh, no. um, Are you the kind of person that has to sit on multiple like chairs or? So the last time I had to play Contra, I sat on the complete Jacques Pepin cookbook nice. in order to do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how tall I am. You must be this tall to play this instrument. Hey, girl, how are you? I'm good. Um, as those of you who follow me on Twitter may know, uh, yesterday I went to a 2000s night at a bar, which was great. But at the same time, I now feel old as shit. So that's fun. <laughs> A two, when I realized two thousands yeah. night, yes, yeah. Um, oh, but yeah. what I mean, what okay, it's retro night, man. Give me, yeah. give, me yeah, that, some, give me some. Is that what we're gonna call this, or we, like, are we want to call it aughts? So, like the naughty audience. So it was actually a a band that does exclusively like aughts and early tens music called Y Two Kids. Um, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> and they were super fun. They did a lot of. They played Face Down by Red Jumpsuit Apparatus. They played ocean avenue they played misery business like they played a couple different fallout boy songs like mostly in that genre of things um okay. but they did also do a very good medley of different like cartoon themes from that song um from that time frame including the phineas and ferb theme which is my favorite good show so yes very much enjoyable but one of my twitter followers who is also a close friend from college um pointed out right now that or pointed out that right now we are the same distance from when the song 1985 by bowling for soup came out as that song was from 1985 when it came out so yeah yeah when i realized that the dj that when i was djing 80s music in college i was as far from the 80s as the early 2000s are from now yep. that yep. one Having having yeah, an right. odds night right or er, right now is the same as having an eighties night in two thousand three. Motherfucker, God, Jesus, I hate time. I hate the linear flow of time so much. Kamish, how are you? I'm good. Um, I I'm just actually looking at the top songs of two thousand three. Uh, just just looking that up. Yeah, appar apparently we were in the club. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, that was a good one. They, mm -hmm. they were they were bringing us to life. Little Kim had the magic stick. Uh, okay. yeah, I, um, you know, Nate Dog and Fifty Cent had twenty-one questions. The Black Eyed Peas asked, "Where is the love?" And uh, was that was that was that good? Black Eyed Peas? I can't remember. That was kind of like before they they really made it. I think because was, I feel like 
Yeah, that was in the era of good Black Eyed Peas, but not like personally not that specific song. Although yeah. like my memory of Black Eyed Peas being like huge everywhere was the like like 2007 2008 time frame yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so is that like in the like the my humps era mm. is my humps black oh. eyed peas or is that just fergie it's just fergie is it no. it's just fergie yeah i'm not no. i don't think i so. think well i am i think produced it but i don't think it is a black no, 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 black eyed peas was black like this like weird no, it's life. black eyed peas oh yeah, huh. yeah, okay right. okay yes well. that was uh you know a lot of fun uh also uh you know, everybody was staying at the Holiday Inn right through with Chingy. Uh, we, we also we also became so numb uh, by Lincoln Park and uh, Hey Ya. Oh, that was a good one. Hey Ya by Outkast mm -hmm. with probably one yeah, of my favorite, was... probably one of my favorite uh, Outkast albums. If if not the Speaker Box Love Below, is probably Equimini I back in '98. Yeah, that's enough for 2003 for music, and I, I feel really old now. But I feel really old every day, so it's a lot of fun. I wake up a new day, and then something else is is hurt, and I don't know how I hurt it. So <laughs> fun. I chose violence this week, guys, and it started with you two. I want to be very clear <laughs> because after last week's show, I said, "Oh, ha ha ha!" To annoy you, I'm going to do a logo swap, or I'll do like script West Virginia and like flying whatever pit. And after I did that, I lost control. <laughs> To be clear, and I think I can speak for both of us, we did. Oh hate yeah, it. absolutely. Yeah. Oh yeah, for sure. Very much hate it. Um, one of my friends from college, a different friend from college, actually sent me that today. It was like, "Nick, can we choose <laughs> violence?" And I was like, "You have no fucking idea." Yeah, yeah. I had someone send it to me, and I'm like, "No, you don't like. This is actually targeted yes. at me. Yeah, yeah. We, we, this do is not, like, this is, like, this this is, is not like ancient magic, magic like, to me, witch. <laughs> like, yeah, like exactly. Like this wasn't." This was not random violence. This was not, a, you know, like, I'm not an innocent passersby. I was, in fact, the target of assassination. <laughs> this was an actual hate crime. Just so we're clear. Yeah. It, was a, it was a personal hate crime here. Almost heaven, Pennsylvania. Ugh. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's actually Islands. about Western, Western Virginia. River. Not even about West Virginia. <laughs> Here's the situation. <laughs> oh, this song is about the Western part of Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not west pennsylvania you know someone suggested i do uh ulm and lafayette Ooh, that that really that really angered me i that's what but i was, I was thinking like that'd be a good like one. raging hawks or something you know like oh, yeah. like raging warhawks in that mm -hmm. no that really anger lafayette <laughs> monroe we, we just kick back and relax because we're we, we've become so numb uh so <laughs> back to the 2003 I, references it started out that like that and then i did the ucla usc because i was like i can do script usc that will look awful and it was it, it, it did, was, yeah, it it did. Was really unsettling and then i did michigan and ohio state and that broke people it was so good i, I was so happy the way that turned out um i mean both of those just went off the rails on the internet and uh people were calling for your head via death penalty that was great um, it was great alana oh, i showed alana alana's like they're joking about killing you, right? It's like, yeah, <laughs> kind of, <laughs> a little bit. I was like, he chose. Like, I woke up and the first tweet I saw was the Michigan and the Ohio State format, and I was like, oh god, okay, Jordan's Jordan's already uh, uh, awakened and chose violence. Starting Saturday, swinging hard. Like, like yeah, he didn't even god. he didn't have any coffee. I want the thrill of the vitriol of the internet coming at me to wake my and ass I'm up. Sure I'm sure that those images will at no point be reused by this committee's accounts. No. I, I cannot wait to go, oh, sorry, deleting. Oh, sorry, wrong image. Trying to delete, trying to delete, trying to delete. Oh, yeah, it'll be great. <laughs> wait, when's when's the backyard brawl? Hold up. September 9th. <laughs> Gonna have to. Okay, I'll have, I'll just, I'll just flag those images for I that mean, day. I mean, I beg like, you to the, not, but also. The, the, the pit one, it looked like Star Wars font, I think. It, it did. I need to adjust that okay. one. That one doesn't <laughs> look as good. I'll just like, I mean. <laughs> It does because you can't do like the letters don't fly. It looks someone said it looked like Pi Pi, <laughs> like I the mean, like Pi and then the logo the social symbol for Pi at the same time. I can't believe I'm enabling you, but there really is, there is an actual script that West Virginia uses. The okay. Flying WV is a that's just a logo. There's right. no font mm -hmm. because that was like Don Nealon invented that because he thought we needed better branding. You did because I saw the old stuff. It wasn't very good. <laughs> it's not. 
I love trying to get the script to look right because I have a font that's pretty close to pit script, mm -hmm. but it's a little too pointy, so I have to like round the edges slightly. Mm -hmm. But when I got when it when it looks right, man, it looks right. Yeah, this is an ongoing issue for pit people who are trying to do bootleg things in the pit script that are do not involve the letters P, I, and T because it is not actually officially a font either. It is reportedly based off of William mm -hmm. Pitt's signature. I don't know if that's actually true, but that is supposedly he right. couldn't yeah. write. Uh, for all for all my pit fans out there, I used Pacifico as the base font. It's a Google font. Duly noted. And, and all it took was just a little bit of adjusting. How would you say so? How would you say Pacifico in, in a Yinger accent? Oh, I mean that's for surfer, there's a bakery in town that is called that. Really? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. Awesome. For surfer girl. <laughs> for surfer girl. Pacificos. Pacificos. I just I assume yeah. Yeah, whenever I do Yinger now yeah, I just Pacificos. I just turn every vowel into an umlaut o. Pacificos. <laughs> You sound like you're like this close to being the Yinzer Swedish chef. You kind of sound like the guy that says they took your germs. Yeah. From South Park. They took your germs. Put the fries in the first shit. You put the fries in your sandwich. Brook a brook. <laughs> yep, there's my Yinzer Swedish chef. Swedish chef there Dave wants that. TM, TM, TM. This is my new character that I'm going to be working through. <laughs> my YouTube short career is now going to be Yinzer Swedish chef. I, uh, I so I yeah, I'm going to do more get of those. I'm an person. Oh, just wait. Yeah, just wait. <laughs> I, I, I just want to say that I'm going to like, I'm going to keep flexing these muscles all summer because this is a good like graphic thing for me to do. Loosens me up for the season. Got to work my way into shape. Can't pull something. Apparently um, what I just posted in the discord is William Pitt's signature. Whoever thinks the Pitt font looks like that has. I read it on the internet. Yeah. Get, get your eyes checked. I don't checked. know, man. Oh, hey, listen. No, I guarantee you, whoever you read it from on the internet was very, very serious. And they're like, yeah, this is absolutely true. Oh, well, you see two the T's with a man. line through them. So that's basically it. I assume that that's the two is T's. Is that what end. it is? I assume that's two I T's. Thought it was a, I thought it was a pentagram, but well, okay. I, that and also the other thing is like the the script fit is known specifically for, although they do have people come out and dot the I when the band does it on the field now, which annoys me. But like it, it doesn't have the dot on the I which is also missing from William Pitt's actual signature. So, yeah. yeah. So that was the other thing that when some people saw the script West Virginia and they were like, oh, wait, Pitt doesn't dot the I. I hate that even more now. It would look weird if they did, Cause, though, because the P is real fat. Kamish, let's talk about Team Turbo Power. Oh, yes. The you soccer power yes, coach. Of, of Team Turbo Power. How, you have some questions about how the game went? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm curious. Uh, first off, I know we're coming off a controversial game last week. Yes where you filed some protests. Mm -hmm. uh, how did how did the league respond and how did the players respond? Well, the coach on the other team, uh, the challengers, uh, he wanted to say, how do you want to handle throw-ins? I mean, how do you want to handle the out-of-bounds? So he came up to me and was like, okay, we both have whistles, we could blow, and we could just direct these five and six-year-old kids to actually do like official throw-ins when the ball goes out-of-bounds. We'll stop the play, we'll blow the whistle. And and this will work very well, which it, yeah. it it was well intentioned, but it did not work well. Uh, you don't say. The other coach was actually trying to do like goal kicks on the backside oh, no. oh, by no, the goal, no, 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 and, no, no. and then and then free kicks when there were like handballs. Oh. And I'm like, are you, like for real? Like we just yell at them, like, hey, no, no handballs. Don't do that. Don't. Hey, no hands. No hands. No diving. We just <laughs> keep the ball yeah. rolling. Keep the clock rolling. Let's let's go here. No stoppage time. Uh, but he was kind of a stickler for the rules, so we I was fine. I'm like, okay, we'll play by the rules, and we'll go this way. You know, Team Tur Turbo Power will adapt, and we will focus, well-focused to, to play this game well. Would you say that things improved at all with the presence of more whistles? Honestly, I think it was pretty well, uh, because, you know, since I knew this before the practice started, I focused on throw-ins in practice. Some of our players were really good at the throw-ins, doing the official ones over the head with two over hands. Head, yeah. Yes, um, actually throwing it towards the opponent's goal, and and actually getting some in direct on the throw-ins without anything, just actually throwing it in the goal. So, <laughs> and, and that counts. Perfect. That counts, folks. Yeah, that counts. That counts. Yeah, that counts. Yeah. That counts. Yeah. Um, given that, is there a plan to introduce even more whistles in the future? Perhaps just giving everyone a whistle. You know, honestly, uh, maybe. Uh, there there was a kid on my team who uh, is a sneak hugger. Um, he does like to just run up and, and hug me out of nowhere when Aww. I'm not paying attention. <laughs> um, and, and at the same time, he likes to have, uh, like, basically latch onto my whistle like he's a fish. 
So, uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, he will sneak hug me and then try to jump on me and blow my whistle that's hanging around from my neck. He's gotten close, but, you know, the first game he got me, the, the past couple games, I have avoided this. So I, I'm ready. So. so what was the final score? We got off to a great start. It, it, honestly, it, we just, it was just like a never-ending onslaught of goals. Initially, it was like one nothing, two nothing, three nothing, five nothing. It reminded me of the, the Newcastle Tottenham game. Son of a bitch! Uh, and get, you know, get, definitely fuck, had to get this in you. here no, uh, you, because I swear to God, <laughs> son of a bitch. So, so honestly, once the score hit like nine nothing, I lost track. The the turbo power was just on fire, and we just kept finding the goal of them. I I honestly lost track of the score. I know they scored two. But, you know, that's when I kind of called off the dogs and uh, took a couple knees and, and you know, um, <laughs> just tried to run out the clock by uh, just dribbling it down in the corner because, I mean, I felt like it was enough and, and the challengers were, were definitely not up to the challenge. I was going to ask if you guys use point differential, but you don't keep score, so there is no point differential. We don't even keep track of wins and losses in this league, but it's fun to pretend that we do because one kid at like halftime came off and was like, yeah, not nothing. And that was the last I remember the score. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, we are obliterating this team. I don't know how many we scored in the second half, but like the other parents, when their kids scored and got those two goals in like the late in the fourth quarter, they went insane. And so I, I'm glad the other team was able to score. I was just very happy about that. That's an impressive game for turning Team Turbo Power. Uh, who do you have next week? I don't know who we have on the schedule. Let's let's see what we got on the schedule. Just a moment here. I think finally we get to be the uh, home team. They've listed us as the away team for like the first three games. So we've been stuck in the gray uniforms. But now we get to be on the blue. We are the home team and we play the Rascals. Ooh. Yes. The little Rascals? <laughs> Just the Rascals. I mean, they we probably are get definitely sued. pretty little. Were they the little rascals or the L little L rascals? Little, little, like little, little Wayne. Little, okay. Little, little. That's probably where little Wayne got his. Yes, from the <laughs> little rascals, yes. I'm simply going to keep it as my headcanon that they are named after the 1960s rock band, the Rascals. There we go. That's it. That's it. Sounds, sounds or, rasc or Rascal Flats, either way. Uh, I mean, life mm -hmm. is a highway. Well, Coach, we're glad that things are going well. Thank you for showing how wonderful that field was. That's a really nice field with like an actual real turf. Yeah, it, it looks like a, it's built like a hockey rink. Yeah. So it looks like it's a hockey rink, but like it's just grass turf. And so it keeps the balls in in, in play at all times. It's like a half, you know, there was a couple or of balls like, that- like, like like futsal almost. Yeah, it's almost like that. Like the adults over 40 actually play on the full, full field, which I may have to do that because I am an adult over 40, unfortunately. Are the out of bounds lines close to the edge? Like you have kids going over the over the boards? <laughs> no, no. So the out of bounds line they they slice it in threes. So it's kind of okay, like okay. yeah, you're not playing the full field for this at all. So we're going the opposite way. Oh, okay. Yeah. I want to I want to see a kid going for it and just like no, no we've had we had uh, one of one one of our players on the team uh, along with my son uh, uh, was kicking the ball really hard and um, caught the other team like in the shoulder chest area a couple of times and uh like turbo power really really took it to, to the <laughs> team. And i was like i was just i wasn't even like thrilled to be there like i was frustrated that whole day and then i don't know they came out inspired by the coach and just took it to the took it to the challengers we're excited we got a little taste of college football this weekend we had spring game fun first off can i say i loved the Ames iowa state uniforms the actual uniform itself they were a shout out to jack trice who was their first uh, black player from the 20s i think it was like 1910s right yeah it was really it was way earlier than most places awesome and they had these beautiful ames helmets that i absolutely love just in like ames in block font across the side gorgeous the rest of the uniform a little weird uh let me find a picture for you guys oh yeah it was the 1920s sorry uh he he passed in in 1923 uh yeah, yeah everyone go read uh spencer hall's 2016 season opener buffalo which is about jack trice real good mm -hmm. in the discord that's that's the front of the uniforms i don't love that for a lot of reasons so just look at the picture i put uh, of trice in his uniform yeah. mm -hmm. basically they almost like hit it perfectly honestly dead yeah without the without the number it looks better mm -hmm. i totally get that yeah the number actually makes it worse I think I, they have to put the number for TV. They do. Yeah. Okay. They do. Well, but here's the thing. They don't because it was a spring game. Mm. Ah. 
though they could have they could have but okay whatever that's fine the helmets though yeah like i always say go to these helmets for like a game or two a year. yeah you definitely they are yeah absolutely great. seriously iowa state your black uniform throw that away and go with this yes. like throw the black uniform away i don't know if you're a big fan of the the all black which you know every team's got to have an all black version of their no they don't no they don't, <laughs> no, they don't. Go with no, this one. They do not. I mean, this Ames helmet would look great with your normal uniform, mm-hmm. period. I don't know. I ride hard for the Ronald McDonald throwbacks, but... Yeah, I do too. The, I the, the ketchup mustard, yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I, I'm with you there. Mm-hmm. But these are way better than, than like, most of the stuff they, they they use. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I love... I mean, okay, yeah. Also, bring back, you know, the Angry Bird and the Tornado. Like, that's also a great yes, logo for yes. too. But these are just really clean. I like any logo that implies that it's going to be shooting a cardinal at me at 200 miles an hour. <laughs> Did you know if you shoot a cardinal at, your, at a wall at 200 miles per hour, it'll go through the wall? Just saying. Yeah, I mean, this is the thing. Like, I, I feel like sci-fi really missed the boat because, uh, like, Sharknado is one thing. Birdnado is fucking terrifying. Mm. Half Birdnado, half Shark... Half, half, sorry, half Birdemic, half Sharknado. Perfect. Bird, Birdnado with teeth. Just for maximum yes, exactly. psychic damage. <laughs> We also had our spring game in Colorado. Colorado showed the hell up for Dion and the crew. It was snowing. Hell yeah. Or it snowed the night before. Oh, no. It, so they had, to, they had to plow the field. It was amazing. I loved it. It was huge. Dion was wearing a cowboy hat. Everything was just, like, the vibes were great. And a lot of, it's good to see Colorado as, like, I remember vaguely when Colorado was still winning the, like, or at least not winning the Big 12, but, oh, you yeah. know, going to the Big 12 championship game very mm-hmm. often. So to have them, quote unquote, at least the energy back, we'll see what the, we'll see what it looks like. But having the energy back is good. Nebraska? Do you, do you not remember their national championship, Jordan? I don't. That's, okay. that's like, yeah, that's before, like, uh. I, I, I was into college football ish. I was. I know that was the four, that was the fourth. That was the fifth down year. I know that. Yeah, yeah. I was. Uh, the, basically, that was kind of like on my edge. I think the first season I really remember was 1988. That was the Catholics and convicts stop. year. Stop. Yeah. More thick girl. You stop right now. <laughs> I didn't say anything. And then, I mean, she can laugh. It, it it doesn't hurt me that people are younger than me. Like I don't. It I don't hurts get that. me. It hurts you. That's fine. <laughs> I'm, I've I've moved past the midlife crisis area. And so, like, even though anybody's younger, like, I, I don't, whatever, you're young, it's fine. Uh, you can guide me through mine, though. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. And, you know, having mine at the beginning of a pandemic is never great. Uh, you know, stuck at home, <laughs> the world's ending. Yeah, it's, 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 I'm old. Uh, yeah, yeah, not fun. But, no, now I'm, I'm, I'm past it. It doesn't matter. I'm, I'm whatever. I feel like this podcast is Jordan in my midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm on the other side, and then, you know, pick girls on yeah. the other side. Like, hey. They're, she's keeping you young, and I'm like, okay, it's fine. It's not that bad on the side of things. See, WV went undefeated in 1980, uh, in 88, 89. And so even though I was very young, that was like my big onboarding into college football. So I very much remember that Colorado team. And I also remember on the way home the one day talking to my dad about this was the day I found out that they had Ralphie. I was very, very excited about this fact. And dad's like, yeah. And if they win all the games, they're going to eat her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's huh. that's definitely a core memory. I cry. Yeah, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. I want to see what your inside out looked like at that moment. Uh, Jordan, can I derail the podcast very briefly to give you some additional psychic damage? Yeah, we have rails. Yeah, um, the first college football season that I like vividly remember and that stood out to me was 2003, 2004. That was the undefeated Auburn year, and then they got screwed out of going to the BCS championship. So I, I, I think how I said, was col- how was college that year, Jordan? Uh, it was good. I. I was uh, I'll be. I'll, yeah, oh yeah. I was I, I, I was toward the end. <laughs> I will I will fully admit that like I but part part of this is because I was not huge into college football before college. So okay. for me, like 2003, 2004, like that actually lines up with like my first like actual I watched it memories okay. too. But for very different reasons than yours. <laughs> Man, I had a like just an upbringing like full of sports. It was ridiculous. So my my dad every time we would go on vacation, there was always a sporting event in the vacation uh no matter where we would go for for vacation we would find a sporting event and we're going to a sporting event on the vacation i don't know how you got away with this uh, i think my mom enjoyed it too because it, it basically probably quieted myself and my yeah. sister down no i i think the first season again 88 i i clearly remember like the catholics versus convicts uh miami mm-hmm. because my mom is from miami 
and then you know it's you know Notre Dame was kind of like New Orleans was kind of a little bit of a Notre Dame city uh, because yeah. of the the Catholicism and there was a big connection you know unrelated like my high school and and, and Notre Dame seminary yeah. so big big Indiana New Orleans connection there South Bend and and New Orleans big connection so it was kind of not been in New Orleans basically the same city basically <laughs> uh so it's a lot of fun but that was that was definitely my memories there so 1990 Colorado yeah definitely remember that one remember honestly there's probably one of the the craziest penalties that I won't forget uh that happened on the uh Rocket Ismail punt return to allow Colorado to win the, the national championship in the Orange Bowl um, basically they, they called a I think it was a holding on a punt return for a touchdown and that basically saves Colorado's butt uh, and allowed mm-hmm. them to share the championship with Georgia Tech. See, that's the nice thing is that for you guys, so you have stuff that, you know, is in memory. For me, I'm still discovering the 90s. Like, oh, look at the 90s. They were amazing. Like, yeah. there was, the 90s mm-hmm. are alive in my head. It's fun because, I mean, a lot of the followers on the Twitter account are, are just the same way as you. So, I mean, yeah. I, I'm like an old head. We used to go on the bus uh, going to school and – like my friends, we would quiz each other and just give abbreviations of teams and their mascots, and we'd have to guess them the fastest, which was ridiculous. So, we'd- uh, hey, yeah. hey, young people who listen to our podcast that are younger than Pit Girl, even there was a time when you would sit around with your friends and just guess things, guess facts, yeah, because no one could look them up. Nope. Yep. So you just had to, you just had to guess things. Mm-hmm. Yes, I told you that's right. I mean, competitive yeah, guessing we had- is still a thing. Yeah. That's Twitter. <laughs> that is true. We've gone backwards of like asking yeah. questions you could easily look up. <laughs> Speaking of the 90s, being good in the 90s, Nebraska had their spring game also this weekend. Hey. Nebraska brought out new Herbie. They have blonde Herbie. They're back to blonde Herbie. The actual like mascot is now buff blonde Herbie. I didn't realize that little red was also a blonde. <laughs> I discovered this. Yeah. I did not know. You guys got blonde curls in the back. You got Amy just mad at us. All right. And I'm like, hey, I knew Little Red, you know, was blonde. So the Nebraska reporter who's, who's you know, also had a, a stop in New Orleans. So I'm like, hey, I know the commission knows. Like, this is somebody mm-hmm. else. I promise you I knew that he was blonde. I did not know. <laughs> I did not know. The face of the new Herbie is pretty horrifying. Dropping this in the Discord for you guys. Here's a close-up of just the eyes and the hair. That hair is not real blonde. It is, it is like. Oh. Like MS Paint Blonde. I don't know how you describe the that. The eyes are also just really unsettling, and I am uncomfortable. We should bevel it this is. screenshot. Uh, drop an, awful. I drop in another one. This is just you, where you can see you can see Little Red's uh, blonde hair, which I did not know was there, and also the new Herbie. It's it's an improvement. I is like it? it. I think so. But now, so now they have him doing all the sports though. Now he's like Pistol Pete. Like Pistol Pete. He does all the sports now. <laughs> Uh, let me see if I can find some of those. Nebraska, are you out here stealing Oklahoma State's thunder? Whatever, man. We want more, like, more doing a whole bunch of sports. Yeah. We want all the mascots doing all the sports. This is one of the more horrifying foam humanoid face mascots that I've seen in a while. Most of them look like they have some type of horrible cancer. This one looks like it has all of them. <laughs> it does. It does have that. It does. Like, did you know you can have eyebrow cancer? Because he sure it's does. His, I think it's the way that they made his cheeks, like, weirdly buff. Like, it's like he has, I mean, like, obviously we all have face muscles, right? But it's like he works out his face muscles. Okay, but I'm, he, I'm, but I'm, he I'm, constantly I'm, skips, like, high cheekbone yeah. day. I may I may roll back on that one, Pit Girl. I think that the old one might be better face-wise. I posted that in the Discord. <laughs> <laughs> That was that was me. I just posted the beveled Herbie mascot in the Discord. Shit, son of a bitch. Honestly, I find the beveled one less unsettling. He's I was gonna say, it somehow manages to be more face shaped, and I don't understand how that could possibly be. <laughs> Live beveling on the podcast. Love it. Um God. he really does look like one of the children of the corn. Kamesh, can you find uh. the, the the picture of like all the Herbie doing all the sports? Oh yeah, let me get that. Corfball? Oh, yeah. I wish. I wish. American Corfball like is in its, uh, American Corfball is <laughs> in its lowest lowest point ever. There we go. I got the licensed one. Yeah, somebody zoomed in on it. It's like, what is he holding a, a, an old school bomb? 
And I'm like, dude, it's a bowling that ball. Me. Like, that was me. Okay. That was me. I didn't see it. Like, you, see you it. didn't zoom in correctly, but here, here's the whole guide right there for you. Not the bevel yeah, of like, Herbie that all, made Beth. These are all great. Oh, yeah. Notice that he has corn in his pocket in all of them, except for basketball. I mean, very and, important. And wrestling. Well, you don't have pockets then. Yeah, and wrestling, you know, there's no pockets. And, and really, if you put the corn somewhere in the wrestling, you know. <laughs> Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that, Herbie. But I like the logo. I definitely am having feelings about the actual mascot face. Yeah. Mascot's fine. He did come out, though, with a Gatling gun, a Gatling hot dog gun. This is, okay, Nebraska, I know we were all very sad about the balloons. This is the best possible way you could have replaced oh, them. Oh, yeah. Like, who? The, we don't need the balloons anymore. No. This is. No. In fact, the only reason you bring back the balloons now is to shoot yes. them down with meat. <laughs> yeah, I, I, hey, let me. I hey, Jordan, you, Jordan, Jordan, you Jordan. Yeah. Here's your episode. Jordan, title. fully prepared yes. for trench warfare with hot dogs. But what Beth just said there, like mm -hmm. a, a giant echo, 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 echo. Oh yeah, I got gotcha. you. I was sitting there, I was like, oh, this is great. I'm like, are they going to shoot it? Like. Are they going to shoot this off? And oh, yeah. Like, just, yeah, just, oh, just wait for it. Like, it's I, great. I hate videos where, like, wait for it, wait for it. But I was like, okay, wait for this. Because once it turns towards the end zone, here we go. And then blot out the sun. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> My God. It's beautiful. It's so good. It is. They also, someone sent us a video from the, like, from the end zone. So you can see what it's like having hot dogs come at you. Come at your face. Oh my god, Jordan! How many Twitter tabs do you have open? Jesus Christ! This is my this is my tweet deck. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so we gotta go to a game, and we have to sit in the end zone, or or are the hot dog splash zone is what I'm looking for. Yes. I guess. Nebraska, shoot me in the face with a hot dog cannon. <laughs> that's better than the Trace McSorley's McSorley stuff. Oh my god, that's so good. It's so good. And Kamish, this, what was the this first? This needs to be standard. Like, I'm sorry, yes! Nebraska. Everyone needs this. And Kamish, what was the first play they ran from scrimmage at the Nebraska spring game? I, I mean, it was a fullback trap. Yeah, for, it was a fucking fullback trap. Hell yeah. For Frank Solich. Um, you know, Name in the locker room after him. A, a beautiful for Frank Solich. I, I really I have mixed feelings about Frank Solich because his Ohio team blew the crap out of ULM in their only bowl game in the independence bowl. So I, I'm mad about Frank Solich doing that to, to my little ULM, but you know, I respect the man and great coach made Ohio, like a perennial Mac power, them running the, the trap, everything. Matt rule was pulling out all the Nebraska stops here. And oh, yeah. he is oh. like, I feel like he's doing the Nebraska better than the former Nebraska alone did. Honestly. I like Matt rule. I know Panthers didn't work. But I've liked Matt Rule since his Temple days. I feel mm -hmm. like this is, I don't know. I hope this works. Because it's its fun when Nebraska is good. I enjoy that because I don't have any particular hate towards Nebraska. And and they have hot dog Gatling guns. Double barreled. I, I, I don't even I know. I feel like this is a specific love letter from the entire state of Nebraska to us. <laughs> and now it had me thinking. I was at Home Depot looking at PVC pipe going, okay, how much, you know, how much compressed air do I need to get a hot dog out of, you know, this diameter PVC pipe? I see. I, I look at things like that. and I'm like, you know, there's lots of foods that you could do that with. Like, imagine an egg roll ga gallon gun. Someone said corn. And do you know how much it would hurt to have oh, corn come rainy down on your fucking head? Ooh, that would hurt. Okay, but also, yes, what if we shot would... a lote out of the corn gun? <laughs> like a confetti cannon. <laughs> the front row just gets splattered <laughs> with mayo <laughs> and corn. <laughs> the cheesy mayo. Um... What is this? I think I, those are good. Someone said burritos, but depending yeah. on like the burrito, again, like it becomes very dangerous at some point. Have any of you guys ever gone to the Delaware pumpkin thing to pumpkin chunkin? I have been to a pumpkin chunkin, but not the one in Delaware. Yeah, like I just you you do need a really structurally sound food, and I'm just imagining like. I mean, a Chipotle burrito is going to pie in the air. Mm. I mean, the hot dogs. There's just no way around that's that. Aerodynamic. That's right, and they and they're not. They, they, they're wrapped they have well. a ton of mass. They're not. They're gonna. They're not gonna like. They're not gonna come down fast. Basically. No. Yeah. They, no. Right. You don't have to deal with corn, which again, a, a, a cob of corn will come at you oh, very right. quickly. Yeah. It's very dangerous. Yeah. 
Life comes at you fast. I, I, An eight-year-old child was impaled by corn. Yes. Like, this is, I, I know how this story goes. I'm still thinking about Pumpkin Chunkin because Beth brought it up. Because the one time that I've been to it, never let anyone tell you that there are not rednecks in the Northeast because there are. Oh. The one time I went to Pumpkin Chunkin was in rural Connecticut and they built a trebuchet and were launching pumpkins mm-hmm. with a very large trebuchet at like an old dead motorcycle and i think a couple of old dead cars it was amazing my neighbor um behind my house competed for years in the trebuchet division yes division okay Mm -hmm. so many things out there i need to learn more about yes yeah i'm I'm sad you don't know about this jordan like this is this is a wonderful thing. Siege warfare with pumpkins. This also has me thinking, okay, like what, which engineering school can we talk into replacing the hot dog cannon with some sort of like army of food trebuchets? Like you put it on a cart, like the hot dog cannon here, you roll it out, you eat some stuff and then you roll it back in. You pen, it is time to move on from the toast Samboni. Yes. yes. Yeah. Quakers, let's do it. Speaking of Nebraska rivals, by the way, we went from Colorado to Nebraska. Let's go from Nebraska to Oklahoma. Woo. Oklahoma is <laughs> bizarre, but they also let normal people, normal kids just like score points. Yeah, it was great. So they had like normal students come out and attempt to, to kick an extra point. Like nobody else on the field, it's just them. And if they made it, they got a year of free Chick-fil-A. And I was like, wow, this is great. I can't believe they're letting students do this. And then if they make it, the points actually count in the spring game. And so one of the replies that, that I got to the tweet saying it was awesome, uh, it was just like one one remark. He was like, well, they're technically all students. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, you got me there. That's true. That was good. It was like nobody else liked the tweet, but I was like, no, no, no. This was a good one. Very clever. Uh, the final score of the weird scoring Oklahoma game was 82 to 80. I'm sorry, 84-82. It was. They're ready for the SEC. Sure. They're so Amazing. ready. They're ready. I mean, it felt like game seven of the 2005 NBA Finals when your San Antonio Spurs defeated the Detroit Pistons 81-74. What do I have to do to get the Dr. Pepper challenge to count? What do I have to do? Ooh. Oh, man. I will do, I will do anything. Can we change the Dr. Pepper challenge to, like, have them kick now? Because you can't, like, underhand kick. That Did would guys- be very hard, yes. Speaking of students doing things, did you see the little old lady kick the kick the kick off at the Colorado game? The ninety-eight year old. No. Lady? Yeah, here, yeah. hold up. Dion brought okay. out the the. Uh, okay. I think she was she's a super fan. Yeah, she's ninety-eight. She's a super. That was fan. awesome. I will say, I'm not convinced that Oklahoma didn't do this because they don't 100 percent trust their kicker, and they were doing like a sneaky backdoor open tryout without saying anything. Ooh. Hey, hey that's clever. That's you hear it here level. first. That is next level. <laughs> we're always Uh-oh. recruiting. No. Oh, onside kick in the snow. That's awesome, it's snowing in the, in the driving it's snow. Snowing. Love careful, it. careful, That's guys. Wonderful. That's so awesome. Oh, she's careful, so gentlemen. Just gonna fire. Yeah. I thought they were gonna lift her up and just uh, like... don't don't pick her up. No, don't do that. If I've told this story in the podcast before, stop me. But we did a we did a a friend's Jewish wedding. We were doing. The, the horror we lifted people up in chairs we practiced with him oh. the dude who's like 220 pounds so we got four of us on there we were going and then grandma gets in the chair oh no and we go one two three huh and we launch her <laughs> she caught air and came back down in the chair all right at least she, she landed like in pounds. the chair all right she didn't break anything that's good i'm just applying that to like college football things just it's just like if you got too fired up to dump the mayo on the coach <laughs> Yeah, and you know the mail was in the head. And, never seen that before. Yeah, never, never had that happen. I, I'm glad Shane Beamer is okay. So we also have oh. a little XFL news. Oh yeah, XFL. First off, I said earlier the way the XFL playoffs are set up, there was we were like in the fourth or fifth tiebreaker because in the North, both Seattle and St. Louis were at seven and three. Yeah, uh, and so Seattle won today though and didn't win. There were like ten scores where if Seattle had this exact score. That meant that St. Louis would win. So the scores it had to have scored today were like 31 30, 31 29, 31 28, 31 27. It had to do with like the ratios. It was bizarre. Yeah. But that means that the DC Defenders are 9 and 1 and they're hosting the 7 and 3 Seattle Sea Dragons. Yep. And 7 and 3 Houston is hosting 4 and 6 Arlington in the South. We're cheering for a 6 and 6 Arlington to win the whole thing at this point. Because that would be Perfect. fun. Perfect. Also in the XFL, we had a. 
the shovel pass? I can't remember what it was. No, no. It was a, it was a, it was a fake punt. It was jump a fake, throw. fake. No, no, no. This this punter threw the ball like a jump ball. Like it wasn't like a. It was a fake punt, but the punter just threw it up. <sighs> like it was just a fake punt, and he just threw it up. How did that it, go it was, for him? Uh, it turned out to be a touchdown pass. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, let, me, let, me, let, let me find it. It's it's really good. Yeah. It was. So this punter threw a. Um, did a fake punt last week and he got a touchdown. And so they were like, hey, let's do it again. So basically, like one of the gunners, and he's like covered. So he may have got away with a little bit of offensive pass interference here. He caught it and then he like got out of three different tackles and took it all the way to the house for like an 84 yard fake punt for a touchdown, which is is absolutely amazing. But like apologies for the vertical. The punter launched it basically from like the one yard line, and he just like you never throw like a fake punt. Nobody was fooled here. Like he's Boom. totally oh. covered. For Jordan Thomas. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Thomas is still open. That's awesome. Yeah, I don't. Oh, he's like asking to get the ball stripped too. Oh my god. Oh yeah, I was holding it so just not great as my dad would say like a loaf of bread even though i've oh. literally never held a loaf of bread that way in my life yeah no he was geno smithing it very very hard <laughs> same, virginia same, fans know same punter tried the same thing later on in that game and threw an interception by the way well he's batting 500 yeah perfect this balance a, also one of those scores was uh, they were, that was the Gar orlando guardians playing the seattle the st louis seattle seahawks the st louis battle hawks and because the score was so close, it, that's what helped keep them out of the playoffs. So that did count for something. We we saw because the points were going to matter. We saw St. Louis running up the score and burning their timeouts up by like thirty five because they knew the score mattered. So he was calling timeouts. He was trying to get the ball back at the end, and he apologized to Orlando's coach, being like, "Hey, you know what we were doing, right?" <laughs> and he's like, "Oh yeah, we knew, we knew, we knew." Because the points matter in the USFL, the other side, we had a full on cleat blowout. A dude ran so fast that both of his cleats like came unglued from his yes from his shoes yeah yeah it was great like they they took a video of him like walking back with his cleats blown up it's so good yeah I mean he got his cleats back but it didn't matter the New Orleans Breakers came away with the victory so folks you ready to play a game always oh oh you gonna put that saw stuff in there saw yeah. Basically, this is this is pronunciation saw. Oh God, here we go, text saw. Now, now, commission, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to be honest on some of these and whether like okay, I'll, like, I'll whether say you know them. Oh, hold up. Uh oh, I don't want that. Deep in the heart of. Oh, sorry. I want that. Of Texas. So present. Right. Okay. There we go. So first off, the game is called "The Stars at Night Are Ooh. Big and Bright." Clap, 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 clap. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Got another clap. Bring this is a Texas pronunciation game. Yes. These are places from all across the state. Okay. I have picked some, a, sort of a mix of like difficult ones, easy ones, things like that. Uh, we'll see what happens. I, I'm, so, I'm going to say this. I live yeah. in the state now. I'm going to say like, I may or may not know some of these. I, I'm not going to say like, I don't know any of them. Or like I will know some like Mississippi. because. <laughs> That, that totally backfired. Even though I live in the state, I honestly I may not know any of these, depending okay. on what it is. But if I know it, I will let you know. And and like maybe I if I know it, uh, I only get like half credit. Well, I'll also I'll probably let you go last on these two, just in case you do know. It. Okay. The first one is M E X I A. M E X I A. Um, I'm gonna go with Mashia. Mejia, okay. I'm going to say Mejia. Mejia, okay. I'm Miss, you know this one? Not 100% sure here, but it, it sounds like, my head sounds like what Fit Girl was saying. It's it's Mejia, but uh, I'm I'm prob I'm not 100% sure on this one. I'm going to, no credit for anyone. Okay. This one is, this one is Mejia. Mejia, okay. Mejia. Okay, Mejia, Mejia. Starting out, Mejia, okay. Mm. Oh, this is going to go great oh, for yeah. us. Number two, G-R-U-E. N E. I, I'm out of this one. I, mean, I know this one. I'm going to say it's green. That was what I was going to say. Um, in which case, Groon? 
Uh, Beth, Beth is correct. Kamish, what is it? Yeah, really? Yeah, Beth is it green. is green. Yeah, it's green. Yeah. It's pronounced hey! green. I yeah. just leaned into it. I was like, yep, that's green. That's That that's, is how we would say too, it here, too. That's too, it is. That's too close. Yeah. That's too close to me. Green is very a very cool little like old city. They yeah. have an old dance hall there. It's a lot of fun. They get some it's, good beer, it's too. It's a good visit. Right on the... It, uh, it is a good visit. Is it a good future venue for our ska band, Jordan? Yes, it is. Absolutely. The, the dance hall there? Oh, yeah. Ska. Number three. Spelled... I R A A N. Okay, not familiar with this one. Beth got the score, so we're gonna put Beth first. Yes, Beth has gotta go first here. Ira Ann. Okay. Iran? I don't even think I've seen this one, honestly. I don't even know where it is in this state, because this state is gigantic. I'm just gonna call it Ern. (laughs) Ern? <laughs> Beth gets the point. Okay. It's Ira Ann. Ira Ann. Yes. So far away. It's it's named after uh, two women, Ira and Ann. Oh, beautiful. Where is it at in it, Texas? Is Ann it's, spelled that way? It's at, no, it's A N A N N. It's out. It's out in Pecos County, out in West Texas. Okay. Way the hell out there, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. It's way yeah. Out there. I was like Ira Ann. Ira Ann. Ira Ann. It's like it, there's there needs to be a hyphen there, but there's no hyphen. It's mm-hmm. it's like Baal. Uh huh. It needs it needs the it needs the um. Like the, the, the Klingon like, uh, uh, apostrophe. Mm, the glottal stop. Whatever. Number four. Whatever that's called. This is R-E-F-U-G-I-O. Huh. My char- my favorite character from Hook. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm familiar with this F-I-O. one here. Uh, Beth, how would you pronounce this one? Refuego. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to lean into pron- Spanish pronunciation, even though it's probably wrong, and say refugio. It's, it's ref. Refugio, right? Refugio? Nope. No. No. Oh, right. This is this is Refugio. What oh. the fuck? Okay. <laughs> this is Refugio. And you're gonna hit on, and you're gonna get mad at That's us fine. for too many R's and whole consonants that disappear. Refugio. If if you're from South Texas, mm. in Spanish it's Refugio, but mm-hmm. if you the locals will call it Refugio. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna go with that because G is pronounced like R. Apparently. Uh-huh. Sure, that makes Refugio. perfect sense. Pennsylvania Matter yeah. Texas now, loving it. Our next one is Mitch will have to stay out of this one because he does know this one. This is B O E R N E. Totally know this one. Yeah. I'm Look at wedding venues here. I'm gonna operate under the same theory as green and say burn. Okay. I'm treating this like a Pennsylvanian word, and that's Barney. Ooh. Ooh, really <laughs> close. That was close. Really? Yeah, it's, it's close. It's, this is this is Bernie. Bernie. Oh, this is Bernie, like Bernie Sanders. I'm so sad. Very that was close. close. Burn actually, like that same the same rules as Green. That actually works out really closely. That was that was good. 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 good uh, their high school mascot is the Greyhound. Next one. This is L A Z B U D D I E. I never heard of this one. I'm gonna go with Lejbudi. <laughs> Ooh, Lejbudi, like like Djibouti. I like that. Okay. Yeah. That's the capital. Uh, yeah, actually, I have just learned that this town exists, and it's about a mile up the road from Lidditz. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but but actually, um, just going to lean into it real hard. Laz Buddy. I'm going to give that to you. Yeah. Sorry, Commission. I, I totally cut no, you off. No, it's okay. I, 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 you know, I could just say I was going with that, but I, I'm really kind of like half participating in this one or not. So it's it's weird. Yeah, uh, Lasbuddy is usually what you go with, but I'll give you that one. That's pretty close. Okay. This was in far northwest Texas, like way the hell out there. Way the hell. Uh, o- owned, uh, named for local business owners, Luther Lasgreen and his partner, Andrew Buddy Shirley. This combo Lots names. Lots of places that were just named hey, man, after. Let me just put two people's what? names together, and it's Ira Ann. <clears throat> Ira Ann. So, Texas uh-huh. loves them a good portmanteau. Do. <laughs> Hey, we right now our score is Texas three, Beth two, Pit Girl one. Next one up. Sounds to me like the Commonwealth oh, and I'm, Texas are tied. I know this one. This is W A X A C A C H I E. Waxahachie. Yeah, uh, there is a band that is named after this place. It's spelled differently, but yeah, Waxahachie. That is not correct. Oh, are you, are you making it, them go with the the Waxahachie? The Waxa, okay. Waxahachie okay, is I, the proper pronunciation. Okay. Locals will say it's Waxahachie. Uh, I say this wrong, and I've had to correct it. Yeah. Hey, next up from we West tried, Texas. Pit girl. Two words: S T U D Y B U T T E. I have never heard this one before. 
Studi Butte. Studi Butte. I like that. Yeah. I, st- there are so many op- options here. Studi Butte. Studi Beauty. Study Buddy. <laughs> so many options. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, like me, I'm just thinking like this is named after Rick Studi and Mr. <laughs> Mr. Ryan Booty. But uh, I, as, two, you're going, two friends. as you're going through the list, I'm thinking like all of those are decent, good humor, like <laughs> ice cream bar names. Yeah, yeah. Um, actual Studi Butte. answer. Yeah. Studi Butte. I, uh, man, like, you know, I think Butte is, is really correct. But like the first part is not. But I, I don't know. It's just weird if there's like, there's a strange way that Texas folks pronounce the Y, and I feel like that's in play here. So I feel like it's, no, it's not study, but it's like, like, like study beat. I'm gonna give credit to Pit Girl and Beth. Okay. It is Studi Butte. Okay. It is Studi Butte. Hooray! Beth had her arms up in like joyous delight. Oh yeah, she was she, right. She made a touchdown. Okay, next one. I am so bad at podcast games. This Anytime is good. Goes yeah. well, I get excited. We got. Yeah. N a c o g d o c h e s. This is just like basically sh- the should... Louisiana cousin of this, the city. I feel like I should know this one. Like I've seen this one written. Like it's big enough that I have heard of this place. There's a college there. So can I just say Natchitoches, and we're just gonna go with that? It's an okay. Option. Got Natchitoches. I'm just gonna like smunch it down even more and just say Natchez. There Natchez. You go. Okay. It, it's, uh, it's, correct it. it's go for it. It's, it's Nacogdoches. Nacogdoches. Yeah. That G Everybody's just favorite just, like nineties yell. Nacogdoches. It does sound something like a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle would yell. Oh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Hmm? <laughs> yeah, that G in there. Just that G doesn't exist. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Nacogdoches. Texans don't like G's. This is what I'm learning. They don't. Don't. Except for green. In which case, we lean on that green real hot. That G real hot. And our last one for tonight. All right. I know this one. P-E-D-E-R-N-A-L-E-S. I know how I would pronounce this if it was in Pennsylvania. Yeah, me too. <laughs> just do it. Do it Pennsylvania. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, go it, it doesn't count. I just want to hear the Pennsylvania pronunciation. Peter Nails. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I love it. If it was in like high northern Pennsylvania, it would probably be Pedernals, yeah. but. <laughs> Did, all right. um, oh, I'll go. I'll go. I'll, yeah. No, it's, it's okay, Commission. I'm going to stand by. Bad Northern Pennsylvanian. Say that one again. Paternals. Paternals. Paternales. That's close. Okay. Closer. Close. Yeah. What is it? Um, it, it's it's Paternales, right? Yeah, Paternales. Yeah. That R in there. Yeah, R in there just exists. Paternales. Just in the wrong spot. Sure. <laughs> you guys did a good job. That was that was six for Texas, three for Beth, two for Pit Girl, and Kamish was there. I was. I was. <laughs> I, my score didn't count. I was playing whose line is it anyway. These were our first 10. I got plenty more. These are my favorites. My favorite of those, by the way, if you had to ask me like, what my favorite is, actually, it's, it's that, I, uh, okay. I like Mejia. Oh. Or Mejia, sorry. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 wrong. oh see, no. See, no. see, a chafalaya. It, it gets you. Oh, it gets you. <laughs> hey, I got, this, I got plenty more, Louisiana. We got somebody coming next week. Uh, I'm sorry, Tuesday. Tuesday night to record, but it'll be released on Thursday. They're going to be doing some New York City, Long Island pronunciations. So we're going to have some fun with that. And hey, y'all all in Italian accents. Oh, mamma mia. Oh. Speaking of mamma mia, hey, how about those fucking Parma Panthers? Am I right? That's what I'm talking about. Took down go, the, go, the, cheese cats. Took go, down the, the Guelphie. Go, cheese cats. Anyways, thank you all for joining me in Texas pronunciation. You guys did really well. So now we've got, I promise you, I opened this document, I started scrolling down, and Kamish has found so much info about the San Jose Spartans that I did not know existed because it's time for our best season of all time for teams who are below 500 all time. But so twaf wab 500 at. <laughs> or if you're, from, if you're from Pennsylvania, just the sat wab. Oh, sat wab. <laughs> sat wab. The sat wab at. Sat wab. No, no, the B, the B is silent. It is, oh, you're it, right. Uh, Sorry. Uh, that looks like Peckway to me. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> We're in a was it, was it Nori? Was it Nori? <laughs> you said it? Was that right or wrong? <laughs> no, it was Nori. It was great. So, uh, yeah, again, oh. best season of all time for teams that are below 500 all time. San Jose State, they're relatively close to 500, but they are below 500. 
They're at the 490 mark. Honestly, looking at the history, they do have a great amount of teams. Uh, but the team that is their best team of all time, an undefeated team that happened in 1939, the 13-0 San Jose State Spartans. 13-0. We're, ba- wow. We're back to, like, World War II era teams. So this is before World War II. So I'm going to give it to you before, you know, it, it's... Uh, okay, sorry. Before your World War yes. II. They were fighting in thirty nine. Okay, when did when did it start in thirty nine? I don't know. When was when was the annexation of when, when did they march into Poland? I thought that was in December of thirty nine. So this could have been done by then. I don't know. Okay. Or it could have been the season could have been finished by then. I don't know. We'll get some Michigan guests. It was on here. September we'll one, nineteen thirty nine. So oh, so okay, they were marching into Poland. San Jose Spartans thirteen and zero started at the same time. What we're saying? Okay, well, you know, we Jordan's just out here courting our Michigan li- listenership right. after his transgressions. We're yeah, he's all just over like... here currently channeling Arthur Blutarski. Did we stop <laughs> when the Germans bombed Pearl Harbor? No. Oh, okay. No. So you know, getting close to the wartime, we're gonna try to find some seasons for some teams that are away from World War Two. I do want to give a shout out to the 1986 and the 1987 San Jose State teams. They were both 10 and 2. Also, the 1932 team that was 7 0 and 2. And then the one before this year uh, in 1938, so that would, would have been before the stuff we're talking about here, they were 11 and 1 in 1938. They were coached by the name, uh, by the man, I'm sorry, not by the name, by the man with the name of Dudley DeGroot. His nickname. I am. I am DeGroot. I am DeGroot. I am Dudley the Groot. This guy has an incredible face, oh, yeah. and he looks like he grew up to be Lothar in the Rocketeer. It's See so Discord. Good. Yes, it's so good. Seriously, <laughs> I tried to. I, like, I got one of his pictures with a hat because I feel like the hat flattered him. It does it, help. It, it helps. It helps a little bit. Uh, I'll say that, Mister DeGroot, Dudley DeGroot. His nickname was Dud. Just straight up dud. It was beautiful. So in bring back nicknames. What do I have to do? Seriously. In the second picture in the Discord of this guy, he looks like one of the like mug shots of the miss like the supers that Syndrome has already killed in the first Incredibles movie. Yes, yeah. exactly what that looks like. Yeah. He's either that or, or he lad. looks like either that or he's like the um like a mug shot for the man with the yellow hat. He does. He does he, <laughs> I'm going to say that he he looks like uh, a Bond villain that, that maybe would have had some oh, like, yes, metal teeth or something. Who knows? Yes. But, uh, looks like Jaws, yes. yes Jaws, yes, yes, yes. This man was absolutely generated by an AI and I love oh, yes. him. He's, yeah, right. he's like very slightly on Candy Valley, but in a good way. Yeah. So let's... If, I just, if I just type in large chin, retro photograph, black and white. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is a... Uh... Dudley, he looked like he was tall. I couldn't verify the height. If y'all want to try to verify the height, go right ahead. But he looked like he was over like 6'5", to me in these pictures. But I couldn't verify height. I did go down some giant rabbit holes uh, for this San Jose State team, which I found controversy at the end of the season, which was was pretty cool to find something playing out in real time in the school paper, which is which is great. So it always is fun to do that. Seriously, I'm I'm looking through like editions of the school paper and I'm like, why did it stop at this date? But I'll get to that a little bit further. So DeGroote's collegiate participation in sports uh were at were at Stanford University. He was an alumnus of Stanford. He competed in basketball, football, swimming, and water polo. Uh, in football, he played under the head coach, the legendary head coach, Pop Warner. He okay. became the Stanford football team captain in 1922 and their first ever All-American athlete. Um, also, Dudley E. DeGroot uh, Jr., his son played for West Virginia. Hmm. Oh, did he? Huh. He sure did. Um, I, I will get to the Not part junior. about West Virginia in just a little bit. Beth is going to hate me. So, uh, <laughs> so basically, he was the Stanford football team captain in 1922 and their first ever All-American athlete. In both 1923 and 1924, DeGroote was the Intercollegiate Association of Amateur Athletes of America, the IC4A, <laughs> so the ICAAA, <laughs> ah. backstroke champion. So backstroke was his game there. He was also a member of the United States rugby team that won an Olympic gold during the 1924 Olympics in Paris. Damn. The picture wow. of him, like the second picture, that was the Olympic uniform back then. 
So oh, I like it. With just, yeah, with just, just the, got shield the shield on the front. Like it's got the American shield. So apparently there was a journal that he kept on this Olympic rugby team that was published throughout the 23 days during July 1924 by the newspaper The Call. I tried to find it, but I was struggling to find that. But that may be something to dig a little bit further. From 1932 to 1939, DeGroote was the head football coach at San Jose State, where he put together a record of 60, 19, and 8. His best season was in 1939, of course, which is this one, when his team went undefeated and he outscored opponents 324 to 29. Damn. Whew. In 2006, the Mercury News published the seven biggest turnarounds for a single season in the history of San Jose State, the group was listed twice in 1932 and 1937. The 1932 season is the one that I shouted out previously. There were 7 0 2. Their previous record before he got there was 1 and 7. In 1937, they were 11 2 and 1. Their previous season was 5 and 4. So, I mean, another margin of like turnarounds, which, I mean, they were 5 and 4 and then they went 11 and 2. So, like, he is one of the turnaround kings, essentially. The 1939 San Jose State Spartans, they spent two weeks in the Associated Press Poll in 1939. And th these were the second to last weeks in the, the poll here. So like the last three polls, they were in the two out of the three, but they weren't in the final poll, which was kind of some bull. I don't know how they just dropped out. But they were ranked 19 in week seven, ranked 18 in week eight. And then they just, they dropped them in, in after that week, which was ridiculous. I don't know why didn't they got win, dropped. Didn't win good enough? Didn't no, good they enough. didn't play. So they just dropped them because they didn't play. They penalized them for not playing, which was ridiculous. They were 13 and 0. Why, why, would they, why would they be dropped? Was... I mean, in a very real sense, they, they ain't played nobody. <laughs> Literally, if we look at the schedule. But again, 13, 0, 13 and 0 is nothing to sneeze at here. So the famed football coach Pop Warner was also like an advisory coach for the Spartans in 1939. Uh, he helped the team to a 24-1 and record over the two seasons he was there. The October 20th game versus the College of the Pacific uh, was the first time that Warner had coached against uh, Amos Alonzo Stagg since they, met, since they met in 1907. When Warner, when Warner was coaching Carlisle and, and they defeated Alonzo Stagg's University of Chicago. So this was kind of like a big deal, uh, big deal game that, you know, even though he was like an advisory coach, Stag and Warner basically like the old timey coaches uh, on the sideline coaches. Well, I don't even know what I yeah, said. Yeah, you're good. Uh, whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Coaches. It was crazy that they met, you know, that many years later, which is, is something you don't really see too much in any time of college football, which is it's pretty crazy. DeGroote left San Jose State after the season and he went to the University of Rochester where he was a football coach. From 1940 to 1943, his record there was 24 and six. Uh, he moved to professional sports when he took over the Reds. Uh, I'm sorry, the Washington football team. Yeah, uh, I'll just all right, that all right, they go around that again. So he was in the NFL. Uh, they did lose the NFL championship by one point to the Cleveland Rams. Uh, yeah, the Washington team won the Eastern Division title in 1945 with DeGroote as their coach. During two seasons with the Los Angeles Dons. The all new, Ooh. the all new American Football Conference. DeGroote's record. Who are, the, who are the Los Angeles Dons? We can look up the Los Angeles Dons. They're not related to the San Francisco Dons. But he was fourteen, twelve, and two uh, with the Los Angeles Dons. He returned to collegiate coaching as the head coach of West Virginia during the nineteen forty eight through nineteen forty nine season. He was only there I'm for two years. I didn't know that. He was only there for two years, and his record with the West Virginia Mountaineers was thirteen. Nine and one. Son of a bitch. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's why I said Beth. The number just appears in the pattern over and over again. That's the why I said. Score remembers. That's that's why I said Beth would hate me. Uh, I'm just reading I, facts here. I'm sorry. The fuck? How that's, does that number keep coming back? Oh, uh, Beth, don't get the knives on me, please. Don't. Words aren't real, but thirteen nine is true facts. Well, that's numbers, right? Numbers never lie. Oh, I guys, I'm putting some L.A. Dawn stuff. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Beth. You found the exact one I was looking for. Oh, my God. The, America's the most colorful at. football team, the L.A. Dons. <laughs> With just so many white guys. So many white guys. All the white guys. I love this. 
there's some like very light editing that makes this immediately a Pride Month poster, and I'm very into. Oh, wait, that. so you so you saw it too, right? Oh, oh, absolutely. Yes. Oh, yeah. The most colorful football team, the L.A. Dons. They were red, white, yes. and blue. So cool. I've never heard of the All-America Football Conference. It's amazing. Obviously, it was the, it, the, later, yeah. the Dons existed for three years, so I suspect that the AAFC also did not stick around very long. Three years. Last champions, the three Cleveland years, yeah. Browns. Go, Browns, go. And it is those Browns. Uh, there's the whole... There's a whole like campaign of these. I'm finding so many, and I'm very happy right now. Enjoy that. Focus, oh, focus on the Dons. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. They're all so good. They're great. These are These amazing. Are so the Brooklyn Dodgers, this, the football team. What? Mm-hmm. They also apparently there was also a New York Yankees, the football team in that same league. What the cinnamon toast fuck. Seriously, there, <laughs> there was. I, I knew that. I knew kind of both of those. <laughs> no, yeah, that's great. Okay, okay, I'm good. All right, I'm hanging in there. After his stint at West Virginia, where Beth, you know, got mad at me about his record. No. Um, <laughs> He ventured out to Albuquerque, and he was the University of New Mexico head coach from 1950 through 1952. The Groot's record uh, was 13 and 17 for the Lobos. He retired from football, and then the Groot received his doctorate degree in education. Uh, he was recognized as one of the foremost. I cannot say this word. It, is it like oologist? I'm pretty I don't sure know. it's like oologist or oologist. Oologist. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's oologist. Right. Right. It's study of eggs, yeah. right? And and ornitho- ornithologist. Yes. Okay. Oh, Jesus it's Christ. Oologist. Okay. Yeah. Oologist. So he, yes. so he retired and became like a bird watcher yes. like everyone does. Like, okay, seriously. Cool. He, yeah. He's an old man yeah. now. Well, let's go watch some birds. Uh, he, yeah, he was an ornithologist, the so study of birds, and an oologist, the study of bird eggs. Okay. His work in, I guess, oology uh, continues to do be to be discussed in it's scientific like fucking Al Pacino oology oology I can't stop this fear uh, the TM, TM second character I'm going to work on is Al Pacino the oologist okay Ooh. TM TM that's fine okay Al Pacino I cannot say this word like my mind is just like I can't do it um, it's crazy that his work is still discussed in scientific publications to this day. Let's go back to the San Jose State 1939 Spartans, an amazing team. They won against Montana State 35 nothing. They beat Texas A&I. Uh, yeah, fucking Havalinas. The Havalinas went down 9 nothing. They defeated the San Francisco Dons, unrelated to the Los Angeles Dons, 16-6. They played the California JV team. <laughs> And they beat them 27 nothing. You can't count that. They counted it. Count it. Then they played Nevada Reno, which is, you know, the wolf wick, the wolf pack. 28 nothing. They defeated San Diego State, 42 nothing. They beat Pacific, which is the stag Pop Warner Bowl, 13 3. They beat it. They beat Santa, Santa Barbara State, 23 7. Willamette, Oregon, 15 nothing. Redlands. Isn't that Willamette? Willamette. Yeah. I, have no I believe it's I, yeah because they have like the, they have the Willamette damn it stickers. Okay, Willamette damn it. All right. <laughs> can I can I drop a little bit little fact in there? Do it. Uh, the Santa Barbara State they beat that's the Santa there that's the Santa Barbara you see Santa Barbara Gauchos now. Okay. Their football team back then with their coach and I'm not making this up Spud Harder. Yes. Oh, we gotta Theodore Spud Harder. Please tell me that he eventually became the head coach at Idaho. God of Idaho yeah. forever. Come on, he should have he should have done that. Also a Stanford man. Oh. He probably Spud lost the job to Spud, Hart- Spud Hardest. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, sorry. Roll All on. All right, let me keep going. Uh, they beat Redlands 52-6. to six. They beat Loyola, California, 10-0. They crushed Fresno State, 42-7. And then their last game of the season, they won 12 nothing. It was against Drake out of Iowa. I, I sh- Just count how many games they played at home out of the 13. Eight home games? Yeah. And they only left California once. Yes. So they went to Florida. There's a Florida ass schedule. Seriously, they only left. Just so that they can go up to California's hat. Yes, Oregon. <laughs> so, I mean, this this is a very friendly schedule to them. 13, 13 and 0. One thing was when they beat Fresno State, uh, the headline says Riot Climaxes, San Jose State's 42 7 win, the Spartans route, Fresno State. The crowd surges on the field, forcing officials to halt the game early. <laughs> so they, they, I mean, it was the game has not been finished and never will be because the officials called it off with seconds remaining to be played 
when the crowds poured onto the field and began tearing down the goalposts. Finally complicated the situation exceedingly by grabbing the ball. Do crimes. <laughs> Absolutely. And the, you know they only had one ball at this point. Yeah, seriously. They probably only had they one ball. The ball. They uh, took the ball. They took the ball and they went home. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, there's a number of college football teams that if your fans would just have the guts to go out there and start ripping down the goalposts, so we have to end the game where it is. Like, Miami, you have another national championship if that happens. True, definitely. <laughs> what are they going to do? Uh, the ladder was recovered, but the game was quickly and prematurely terminated due to the accompaniment of dozens of fist fights going on simultaneously all over the state. <laughs> The game was quickly and prematurely terminated. Feels like the sports writer equivalent of rapid unplanned disassembly. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Oh, he also left a large co concrete hole in the stadium. Too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and dust all over California. I got some more newspaper articles here. San Jose State beats Drake. Perfect season! Exclamation point. And then also along with this 1939 uh, season, Texas Ags finish year unbeaten. Spartans win finale. 12 to 0, compile scoring record of 324 points, ready for bull bid. Invaders prove tough. They're ready for a bull bid. It's fantastic. And then they go to the Spartan Daily. It's like De Grootman, which, I mean, that's they, De Grootman. Okay, whatever. Close season with a win, uh, with a 12 0 win over Drake. 14,000 witness state finish perfect year. It's just amazing. San Jose State Spartans put a fin finishing touch on its season by polishing off Drake University Bulldogs 12-0. Uh, it was the co-coach Warner DeGroote machine, 13 straight victory, and, and the locals ended their schedule untied and undefeated to ensure their chances of a quote-unquote bowl bid. So there's some bowl bid hype here for San Jose yeah. State. But their schedule ended after Drake. What What happened? What happened in 1939 that they didn't get a bowl beat? Let the bowl drama begin. Uh-oh. Oh. Love bowl drama. Yes. Let's go. Bowl drama here, right? Jordan or somebody to pull up the Wikipedia of how many bowl games were actually played after the 1939 season. And just tell me how many of it before I begin. Okay. I got you. Yeah. I I, while we do this, I did want to highlight, like, in one of the newspaper articles a little bit up a little bit higher, there's a different mm -hmm. article. I got Tennessee. I got five. What do you have, Jordan? Go ahead, pick girl. Highlight. There's a, yeah, there's a different Tennessee about, or a different article about Tennessee saying that yes. Tennessee was in the running for the Rose Bowl for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have questions. I assume that we are about to get answers. Oh, we're going to get some answers to this craziness here. And 1939, really, not too many bowl games. As you both said, five bowl games were played that year. The San Jose State Spartans eyed an orange bowl bid. San Jose State's chances of playing in a postseason game found little in the way of new developments since yesterday. But hopes of grid followers on the Pacific coach were still high as advisory coach Pop Warner was still trying to sell the idea to Miami officials that the Spartans 11 appearing in the Orange Bowl on New Year's Day would basically be the best idea for them. So Pop Warner's trying to sell the Orange Bowl. Hey, you need to invite San Jose State. If you can't get Pop Warner to convince fucking college football that your team should go, I'm not sure. I don't know, man. Like the legend Pop Warner is lobbying, you know, a little bit like Nick Saban lobbying for Alabama to get in the playoff uh, on like ESPN. I, this is what I feel like in this situation here. Pop Warner, again, he continued to lobby to make a deal to land the Spartans in the Orange Bowl at, on New Year's Day against a team that wasn't even named yet. Then there was a bowl that was basically proposed, an Olympic Bowl. There was an official to invite Duquesne University of Pittsburgh to face the Spartans in Los Angeles. Missouri and Texas A&M declined the invitations to play San Jose State. So Ooh. a potential Olympic Bowl that could have happened between Duquesne and San Jose State. I like it. I'm like, okay, an Olympic Bowl. Let's see what we got going here. Maybe there's something there. Then another tick here. It says San Jose's chances to play in the Sun Bowl uh, in El Paso appear slim as Arizona State College of Tempe, which is Arizona State, is reported in favor of Rutgers University for the contest. Catholic University, Georgetown, Duquesne, and Clemson are other teams being considered in addition to State. The Sun Bowl kind of looked like a long shot for the Spartans in this situation. 
The postseason game for the championship of independence between San Jose and Gonzaga at Spokane, Washington, January 1st, is still hanging. So this okay. is kind of like, this could be an Olympic Bowl between San Jose State and Gonzaga on January 1st. We scroll oh, down. Great. We scroll down. Since the season ended on uh, November 30th, we scroll down to the uh, Spartan Daily, December 6th, 1939. Spartan bull bid in turmoil. Uh, <laughs> the Texans accept invite to play in New Orleans. So the Texans from Texas A&M accepted an invite to go play at uh, the Sugar Bowl. The Aggies were going to play Tulane. So we're like, okay. The Los Angeles Coliseum was supposedly going to be the area for the uh, Olympic Bowl. It's supposed to be played if it ever comes to pass. So this was like a proposed bowl game. It wasn't a bowl game before this year. It was just like, hey, we're going to play this bowl game. Let's make up one because, you know, San Jose State went undefeated. Let's do that. No word had came from Larry Sunbrock, who had left San Jose after several hours of conference with Coach Dud DeGroote. Uh, Sunbrock said when he left the city Monday, he would be in contact with DeGroote sometime yesterday and inform him of the latest developments. But evidently, no publicity has been given to the Olympic Bowl in Southern California sports circles. So this is kind of like, oh my God, is this Olympic Bowl just being made up on the fly and nobody's contacting the Coliseum? This uh, is the this is the this is the Frisco football classic. Oh, it, it seems There's that always way. Always right? been scams, actually. Yes. yes. Yeah. No publicity for this. Reason number one was looked upon. You know, basically there was a misunderstanding with Coach DeGroote, and he said there was a mistake by the Coliseum officials. So apparently, the Coliseum wasn't even booked for this hypothetical bowl game. <laughs> Um, it wasn't going out. The promoter had not received anything definite from the two schools that he contacted and was waiting for reports from them before contacting DeGroote again. The whole thing seemed to be a mixed up affair. Now that Texas A&M accepted a bid, some definite word will be forthcoming. This word is expected at any moment. And if it comes during the day, a special bulletin of the Smart and Daily will be placed in the window of the publication's office. We go. So we're at we're at we just did you know December sixth. Now we're at December seventh, nineteen thirty nine. We're like, okay, we got anything good here? There's an article that says five Spartans given honorable mention awards. Fullback is is second Spartan to retrieve uh, achieve mythical team in two years. The little All American, the San Jose State uh, Spartans, Leroy Zimmerman, fullback, and Bob Ticknall, Ken Cook, and Don Presley, and Morris Moonigan. I'm sorry, Manigan or Moonigan, whatever. They were named to the team. This is when the paper kind of started to take some steam out of the San Jose State <laughs> Bowl bid here. One of the, the folks in the paper, it says, this grid game invitation will bowl you over. I'm like, wow. so here we go. This is great. Extra, San Jose State College is definitely assured of a bowl game, exclamation point. Despite many rumors, in conflicting statements, the undefeated, untied, smart and grig juggernaut will play in at least one bowl. Received yesterday by the student council from an ardent fan was an invitation for the Spartan team to play and the bowl to play right in their laps. This, wow. This invitation, special praise was given to the college's high-scoring team as well as the newly elected captain, Kicking Kenny Boo Cook. I don't even know if that was somebody on the team. The bowl is capable of quite a large capacity, depending upon your appetite. Although the large Spartan team would have a hard time getting themselves onto its light green floor, let alone playing on it, this difficulty was surmounted by our host who said if we couldn't play in it, we could play around it. The bowl? Oh, it's a mush bowl. <laughs> it is now on display in the publication's office showcase. That's a long way to go for a burn. Yeah. <laughs> it's a long fucking way to go to a burn. There's Proto more. onion. It was God. They were just given a lot of grief to to this bowl bid thing. So, and then finally, we go to December fifteenth. Finally, everything is settled. Bowl extra, San Jose State versus Colorado Mines. Ooh, hey. uh, our ore diggers. Finally, very we got a game. Here we go. The Prune Bowl game on Christmas Day. <laughs> I'm like, so I'm reading this right, and I'm like, okay, Prune Bowl. This has got to be another joke, right? is this is what the newspaper is doing. It's another joke. And I'm like, no, this is only talking about their bowl game. I'm like, this is great. Okay, so finally, we'll get to the bottom of why San Jose State 
you know, they finally get a bowl game. Yeah, this is great. Spartan Stadium has seen a final conflict. So they're going to host the bowl game in the Spartan Stadium. The game was going to be it was taking place on Christmas Day. The Christmas Day game will bring together two undefeated, untied 11s, with the Spartans boasting a string of 13 victories and the Coloradoans an eight-game win streak. So Colorado or Diggers were 8-0 and San Jose State 13-0. And I'm like, okay, this is great. Finally. It, it, they were like, it should be a high-scoring high battle. Um, yeah, that's a good game. Perfect. So December 15th was the last paper before the students took their Christmas break. So I had to go to like 1940 to figure out what happened in the newspaper, yeah. the Spartan Daily. Sports Review by Frank Bonanno. This being the first paper of the new quarter and the day after the New Year's papers over the entire country are writing to, great, uh, to finish a great football season. The results of many postseason games and major bowl classics are the sporting news of the day. No game. None. The Spartan Daily... They do. The Smart Daily today should have had its front page filled with the results of the postseason game played by the undefeated, untied San Jose State football team. Instead, we find no mention of football in the entire paper. What is the reason for this? The Spartan Grid Machine under capable handling coach Dud DeGroote, an advisory coach, Pop Warner, went through thir- went through a 13-game schedule without a single defeat. With the Spartans' 12-0 win over Drake University, word went around that it would be a matter of hours or at the most two or three days before the Spartans would receive an invitation to a bowl game of some sort. Vacation off. As you know by now, the Spartans stayed right at home. Many of the fellows who had given up their jobs for the coming game were out of work for the Christmas holidays. Coach DeGroote gave up his much-deserved vacation to help this team get another game and ruined his entire Christmas vacation by staying in his office waiting phone calls and telegrams that might give San Jose State a bid to a New Year's Day classic. After a week or more of bickering that turned the whole football setup into a farce, the Spartans football team became the laughing stock of the community. Our local papers did not help the matter with their wild stories that had the team playing a different team in a different part of the country every other day. So they're like, hey, are, hey maybe we can kind of contribute to this. Damn. It was nuts. Damn. I went, I went, I'm like, I feel heartbroken for these folks. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. The two chambers of commerce topped things off with their supposedly scheduling of the Colorado mines for the Prune Bowl. The Prune Bowl did not happen. Then they came up with something called the Tourist Bowl. <laughs> they proceeded on its own to, to fix up the game with the Texas Rattlers and the Tourist Bowl in Denver, Colorado. Finally, it was all settled. The Spartans were set to leave Denver on December 28th to play the Rattlers. The group who throughout most of the negotiations was kept in the dark until he read about it in one of the downtown papers, finally called off the whole deal when the tourist bowls officials failed to mail the expense money and the contract. I think that's St. Mary's Rattlers. I think that's the Rattlers they're talking about. That's so weird. It was crazy. So in the paper, they continue to go on. They have another article called Football Farce. In sport review, I'm like Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ San Jose State, leave this thirteen and zero people alone. They should, they're like, they should have hung it up after the Drake game. They became the joke of the papers in the Pacific Coast uh, with their in, indefinite attitude on whom they would play. And finally, in sheer desperation, they offered to play anyone they could find in order to call off the Wolves, who were demanding a game for the worthy Spartans. There was no need for the football team of the San Jose State College to take that publicity of the sort. In the future, let us hope those in charge of the destiny of the Spartan activities on the athletic field will consider the ultimate outcome before venturing forward. And I'm like, dude, like this paper just, just like ripped the group to shreds trying to get his team a bowl bit. So if we went back further in the podcast, right, I mentioned that he left the San Jose State Spartans after the season. And he went clear across the country to Rochester, New York. Did he get run off? But did he like get tired of this shit and just like walked? I mean, I don't know. I I have to ask that question. Like, did this bowl bid drama cause DeGroote to leave? Like, I mean, this was kind of like the best coach of all time, which is kind of feels like the Mississippi State saga here, right? Right. Like this coach mm-hmm. just went 13 and 0 and you're giving them ever living crap every single day in the school paper incredible i was able to get to like march 1st and the group announced that he was leaving san jose state and he was going to be the coach at rochester uh so he the letterman society hosted an honors for him and he just left he left the school after this i don't 
it doesn't mention anything about him, you know, leaving on bad terms, but I feel like just them giving them so much crap between, you know, them trying to get a bowl game. You got the prune, the prune bowl. I mean, they were <laughs> thinking they were going to get in the orange bowl. I mean, I, it's just crazy that pop Warner couldn't get him in a bowl or something like that. You know, again, 13 and oh, you think they would invent a bowl game, but you only had five. What were the five bowl games that year? Sugar, orange, sun, rose, and cotton. Cotton, like the big ones was- and the five. Yeah. Just five. Yep. Wasn't even the we were robbed years. of the prune bowl. We were fucking robbed, we were robbed of, the prune, bowl. of the prune bowl. I do have a late breaking update on the prune bowl. Because okay. um, I Googled while Kamish was talking. And it does turn out that the that per a ticket stub available on eBay and also a program available on eBay, that San Jose State did play in a prune bowl in nineteen forty. But it was in November, and it was a charity game. They hosted South Dakota, who were the Coyotes at the time. Um, Sorry, the Coyotes. Oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. I I always assume that. Yeah, that's on me. Anyway, they hosted South Dakota in the Prune Bowl on November 21st, which was Thanksgiving Day, in a benefit game for Boys Town. So they did eventually play, and they did win, but it wasn't actually a bowl game. Huh. It's just kind of like how you're like, okay, he's 13 and 0. Why did he leave? Why did he leave? Did he get a better job? Like Rochester seemed like, you know, maybe a step down or, I mean, he's been a California person his whole life. So he wanted to go play some, he wanted to go play some music in Rochester. That's right. I did plug in something here unrelated. I found the, the final link house grid rankings. What is this? This is something that I found absolutely amazing. It is the link house grid rankings of every single team in college football. There's 609 teams listed here. Oh my god! A difference by score system. Yes. So this is S and P plus for like yes 19, 1939. 1939 S and P plus. The team that I found ranked the lowest uh, was East Carolina. That's actually a team now. East Carolina was 601. <laughs> <laughs> Go Pirates! Hey, hey, these are all teams down here. Adrian and Eureka and Olivet. I mean, Dickin- Dickinson might be like PA Dickinson, but I can't really read what it says there after it says Dickinson. I think that's, I think that's South Dakota State, maybe? Montana Mines. Cool. This is so cool. Can you imagine trying to compile this data? Oh my god. By hand? Oh no. Otterbein is still a college, but I don't know if they have football anymore. Kenya. Hey, Dartmouth 29. There we go. Yeah. Dartmouth above anyone that's important. That was great, honestly. Seeing that, just cool. just like just seeing that in the paper because I I, I was searching. San Jose State was ranked thirty seventh in this thing, even oh, though man. they were even though they were thirteen and zero, even though they dropped out of the AP top twenty, which again at the time was only twenty teams. So just just seeing something like that, um, I wanted to just like briefly mention the East Carolina Pirates football team. While they were six oh one at the time, they were zero and eight. And uh, they were outscored. Uh, they only scored, let's see here, 18 points on the season. Jesus. <laughs> they were uh, they were not good. Yeah, just, just, just very, very not good whatsoever. <laughs> they only scored in, in three games where they scored six was their maximum. Yeah. Uh, sorry, East Carolina, for the, the side jab here on, on your side. But, yeah, that was not good. But it was just fun to see something like that. The San Jose State team was great. I mean, the California JV team, which – I was trying to figure out what the difference was between their normal team and the JV team. I just feel like the JV team is back in those days were like basically just underclassmen. So like JV, like you had to be like a junior or, okay. or a sophomore. It wasn't like they didn't allow the play senior, like seniors could only play and juniors could only play on the actual varsity team. So it was one of those weird rules. So like them just being JV just didn't mean that they were like worse than, than what they were. So um, even though that gives the impression that it's the JV team, you're not necessarily as good as the, the varsity team, but 13 and 0 is nothing to sneeze at. It looks like, by the way, the reason there might've been a brawl after the Fresno state game, it looks like Fresno state had, they'd only like start, they they played each other a bunch, but then Fresno state had broken a contract with San Jose state in 30 in 35. And they started, they said they were gonna play again in 39, but then Fresno state looked like they broke a basketball contract. And it was there was a lot of bad blood there Ooh. going like the game was probably not even going to be played in 39 Ooh. and then it was played so when it was played and when san jose actually beat the tar out of them i assume that there was a lot of bad blood there that just boiled over 
I love this. I love finding these things out so much. Yeah. Just spite. Spite has always existed. I, I went yep. too far down the rabbit hole on this one. It's but, so good. But I, so good. I wanted to know, like, why didn't it get a bowl game? There was so much hype for it. I don't know. It just seemed like they, they got led astray and people were just trying to make bowl games on the fly instead of, like, having, you know, bowl games thought out in advance, which, you know, the Frisco football classic. Uh, it was something that just basically just came out of nowhere. And if that was around, you know, San Jose State would have would have gotten it. The Prune Bowl, technically not an official bowl game. I love it so much. Yeah, Played in the middle Kamesh. of the next season, but yeah. we'll count. count. Kamesh, thank you so much for that. If we haven't mentioned your team yet, don't worry. We're, we have plenty of time to get through it. I think we got, what, 27 more to go? <laughs> something like that. Anything else, boys and girls? I'm just still looking at the big so. list of all of the schools that were playing yeah. college football I was in 1939. I was, I was trying to see if Jordan could do something with the graphic of this to see if he could make it readable in a tweet. Because like yeah, I post I it I, and I'm like, I'm trying to like crop it. And I'm like, I need to be able to like zoom in uh, on something like this. But just to see like every team. And, and I guess we can mention the, the national champions of Georgia. They were, they were 69th. In 1939, in these wow. rankings. Nice. I'm still trying to find out how tall Dudley the Groot yeah, was. Yeah, <laughs> I couldn't do it either. He looked like he was like so tall, but I I know that his son was five okay, eleven. Son, I could uh, I found that okay. he looks like he looks like Lurch. He does. <laughs> he looks so tall, but I couldn't do it. Like I went down the rabbit hole, like figured out like why why did the Groot leave? But I feel like the you know. When they, they published this little, like, excerpt in the paper, just basically, hey, we found a bowl game. You can play in. It's right in our lap. Uh, just basically. I found a Blogspot article that says that he was 6'4 and 234 pounds, which at that time would make him a mountain of Jesus a man. Jesus Christ. Okay. Hey. We'll go with that. But I, I mean, he honestly, I was thinking at least 6'5, but 6'4 is close enough for me. 232, Damn. a rugby gold medal winner until they brought rugby back in the Olympics in, what, 2016, which was only sevens? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he's the last, like, a uh, part of the team that was a gold medal winning rugby team uh, with the official rugby in the Olympics. Kind of a legendary man, and then uh, apparently he loved birds at the end of the time, so. That's all you gotta do. God God bless D Dudley Sergeant DeGroote. Okay, folks, that's all we got for tonight. We'll see you guys on the other side.